All right, so uh, you've heard from uh, Mickey a very high level overview about the Israeli market, and I'm going to drill down to the bottom of the like one phase within the machine learning development cycle. So uh, sorry for that. <laughs> and uh, I hope uh, you have a good time to like fly up and then come back down. Um, so uh, let me introduce myself quickly. Uh, my name is Inval, and uh, I joined Pendo a year and a half ago to establish the machine learning department here at Pendo. And um, uh, I will not talk a lot about uh, like our projects and what we are doing, but you are welcome to catch me in the break session and, uh, and uh, talk to all the Pendozers around here and myself. Um, but uh, what I would, like my, my personal journey, I finished my PhD in computer science like uh, uh, seven years ago. And since then I've been at really huge companies like Microsoft and uh, really tiny companies. I was the first employee of a startup that was later acquired by an, another startup and uh, they IPO'd later. Like it was, I, I had uh, my share. And um, now uh, the, the thing is that <laughs> a POC phase, a proof of concept phase, is uh, something that uh, um, is there all the time for every machine learning project, for every company that I've been at. And um, I think that uh, there are a lot of, uh, of good things in it and a lot of bad things. And we, as data science leaders, uh, I think have... Um, have to, to make it better, like to, to make sure that we are uh, not drilling down into like a, a one year long POC and not delivering value. And this really connects to what Mickey said, that he, we are here eventually to bring value to a company. And uh, the POC phase can deviate us a bit from, from this mission. And uh, I do want us to be like uh, uh, on it, and uh, therefore I came up with uh, this uh, talk. So uh, let's start. And when I start, I really, really like to start with an example. So it's an example not from Pendo, but something that is uh, very easy to explain from real life. And every machine learning project starts with a business need. Right, so um, uh, if you have Amazon Prime or a Prime Video, um, so uh, there, there is a business need. There was a business need. They actually uh, answered it. Um, when you see like a, a certain scene, and you feel that you know this actor or you know this actress, and you just don't remember their names, you know it. How did they solve it? Do you do you have it? Do you use it? How did they solve it? I forget the name of it, but it's like uh, you can pause the video and it just gives you a list of all the actors that are on the screen. Right, right. So it's such a cool feature, very easy. And I, when I saw it at first, I thought, wow, what a good machine learning project. I have to put it in one of my decks. So there we go. Um, and the business need comes from a customer pain. And the customer is exactly that. Like, I don't know this actress. What's her name? And uh, there's a machine learning, after we identify the need, we have like, we identify the machine learning opportunity and we say, okay, we can, like, we have face detection. We can uh, like detect, detect the, the face in the scene and match it and uh, find like the, the actual uh, actress. Um, and this is how it's uh, implemented. So when you pause uh, the, the film, then uh, you get to see the, the actor's names. Uh, but let's assume that, that it doesn't, that it's not implemented. Like in Netflix, uh, it's not implemented. And now you are working at Netflix and they tell you, we want this. <laughs> so what, what, what you're going to do? What's like your first move? Yeah? There's a list of the actors mm -hmm. that participated in the movie mm -hmm. and uh, have a pre-trained uh, uh, English classifier. Right. Network and, uh... and start a POC, right? Yeah. So yeah, we're starting a POC. It's POC time. Uh, so this is exactly like my way of thinking. And um, <clears throat> let's pause for a minute and uh, talk about, wait, like when we start a POC, we have to acknowledge that we are not like starting a project. We are starting 
a POC. And this is more or less like a Wikipedia. In Wikipedia, it was very long. I, I had to shorten it. But um, uh, this is the definition by, uh, by Wikipedia. It's a, a feasibility test, OK? It's not a, a final, complete product uh, ready to be delivered, right? It's a feasibility test. And it's, a, it's usually, usually small and may or may not be complete. Right? Uh, but the idea is to, um, to ask ourselves whether we can uh, solve the business problem, uh, this customer pain, with machine learning. And um, if we look at the life cycle of a machine learning project, we start with a business need. Then we start with a POC. And then we continue. We have the model development. And then we have to remember the phase of the product integration because like, uh, the machine learning model is not living in, in vacuum. It usually like, connects to some UI and a backend and a product out there. And uh, then we ship it and we forget about it or we monitor it. Like It depends. Like I like to monitor. But, <laughs> All right, so, uh, but look at this phase, the POC phase. Um, it actually, after the POC phase, uh, we can have two outcomes. One possible outcome is that we say, yeah, it's feasible, let's continue with development. And then we are, like after the POC, we know more like what are the product requirements, we know how to continue. And <clears throat> the, the other option is that we'll say, no, it's not feasible. So let's not dive into development and all this long journey that comes after and, and stop it on time. Let's not waste all our efforts on something that eventually, it could be not feasible. It could be that the customers are not so interested in it uh, or like any other thing. And we'll talk about it later. So uh, this is like where POC. And uh, do you, yeah. With the POC, you also for, for machine learning, you have to create a model also. Yeah. yeah. So, so, how does it come, like you said, like the model development comes after the POC? Now, assuming mm -hmm. the POC involves a model development. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, so that's, that's a very good question. So, the POC is the baseline model. So, we have to, um, to strive to something very, very basic and not like put there the, the best model from you know, the, the um, latest and greatest machine learning uh, article that we read yesterday. And it, of course, it doesn't have a GitHub re repository. We have to, <laughs> to start it from scratch. And like, no, uh, let's, let's start with something simple that kind of so solves the problem and estimate whether we can go further or we should stop. Um, so, I don't know if you know like the reference to Notorious B.I.G., but uh, I liked it. <laughs> I hope you understood it. Um, anyways, uh, why, why, why is it so notorious? Like, what's the problems with, with POCs? Any idea? Maybe when you go from the sort of examples that work to the whole set that you want to deliver to a customer, yeah, out. <laughs> yeah, so you start with the... But it doesn't extend to the whole set. Right, so you start with the limited data set, and uh, then when you hit production, then you're uh, like, it's a mess, because real life data is, is different than like a, a cleaned and nice data set that you collect. I think, I think there's also a misalignment in understanding of feasibility, the definition, right? It can be algorithmically feasible and great looking in a notebook, but really not adapted to production environment as it is today, or too expensive to put in. Right, some technical uh, issues that may may arise from, from a POC or during a POC. Capacity. It is mostly not scalable unless there's scalability in the project in the first place. That's true. What about like. Um, uh, like the definition itself of a POC. Like sometimes we just don't know where to stop, right? So, um, so one, I, I think it's around the exploratory nature of the POC. So I'm a data scientist. When 
I get data in my hands, I'm so happy. I'm trying to like explore everything, start answering a lot of questions that pop up to mind. Like, it's, it's nice, it's fun, it's cool, I like, I like it, but um, I'm not really, really very focused on like the, the value to the company and uh, the, the project that I have right now. So, um, so it's not well defined a lot of times. And uh, we are not sure what to expect, what, what will I get in the end. And it, it is inherited uh, to have like a lack of focus because we do want to, to be able to explore a bit more and to ask a lot of questions. And, um, and it, it gets long. It's, it, it could uh, take weeks or months. And uh, I heard of years, like a year, not more, I think. Um, and uh, there is no definition of done. When are you saying, yes, I've done with the POC. I'm okay with it. I'm like... I have my results because you always have something more to ask or to explore. Um, oh, so the manager tells you what if you are the manager and you you don't have a clue. <laughs> um, so um, so it and and again, this is something that you have all raised that it could be inaccurate because you're showing some results. It looks so promising, and everybody wants it. And eventually, like they don't reflect reality. So this is something that you should bear in mind when you present it to to everyone around. And yeah, this is like a huge problem. So having all that in mind. If this is like so bad, why are we doing it? What's, what's good around it? What's, what's the benefit? Not starting the huge project right away. Not starting right away. More. Save money if you that the project is not a whole thing. Right. Let, let, let's say it, I hear from the others as well. It's worse if we don't do this. Right. <laughs> it's worth it. I, I like it. It's worse if we don't do it. Um, so I think that, look, in machine learning, we have a lot of uncertainty. Like we start a project, we're never sure. We feel like very uncertain that we can actually deliver the value that we, we promise. Um, and we need to validate, we have some kind of hypothesis and we need to validate it. And uh, there are always tech limitations and uh, it could be around like actual, the, like the machines are not big enough to, to handle it. And it could be something around like the, the technology is not mature enough. And if you require like 100% uh, percent precision and uh, recall and F1, so maybe it's not like, it's not something that, uh, that, that is feasible. And another thing that I, I don't know how to say it, but you have to like to feel the data. Uh, I don't have a better way to, to phrase it, but it's uh, something that we all data scientists understand. <laughs> um, uh, and it also, um, if we feel around the end, that it's going to a good way, like it's a, we are about not to say this project is, a, is not for us, but we are going to continue to development of this project, then uh, we can start with effort estimation of how much time it will uh, take us to deliver both, the, both like the engineering side of it and both like the model development phase, how much time it will take. And uh, what roles do we need in the team in order to, to have it done? So uh, it, it helps us to reduce this uncertainty. And then um, on the product side, or more like the business side of things, um, we could show it to possible customers and ask, do you like it? Would you pay for it? Like eventually, it's something that, uh, that gives, like we can describe it with words, but if you give them like actual presentation around it or some kind of demo, it helps a lot to, con to explain the value that uh, this feature conveys. And um, also, it can even give us further, like we use it at Pendo, to actually design the user experience. They say, well, uh, I, I don't understand, like 
can you add a button that does this? And uh, can you put the colors? And uh, would you have a trend line bar, uh, like a chart for it? Or things that are actually helping us in designing the, the user experience around it and uh, preparing the entire project's product requirements. Um, so another very important thing that uh, not all of us uh, are involved in, but uh, I'm involved in it a lot, and I think that uh, my team is also very aware of uh, what we are doing with, with the management. And if you have a good POC and you collect some customers' reviews and uh, you know like that there is a product fit and you uh, project it to the and present it to, to the management, then you get a buy-in from the management. And in machine learning teams, it's, it's very important because uh, we need to have a lot of, uh, of buy-in and support from, for, from the management because our projects are, are complicated. It's not like uh, very simple to, to bring to life a machine learning model in production. And we need this support, ongoing support from the management. Um, so uh, this is also, and basically, like if I look at the overall thing, we want to reduce the risk. Uh, so yes, it is worth it to, to, to start a POC. And um, from this, a specific talk, uh, if you're asking, okay, so what's in it for me, and you're still not convinced, so I have this slide especially for you, um, is I will give you some, uh, some tips. I give you actually three tips on how to, um, to start a POC, and uh, some do's and don't do's uh, that you can avoid, some pitfalls uh, that you don't want to go into. And uh, I hope that I'll wrap your mind around uh, how to think of a POC, how to perceive them. And uh, uh, it's something that is more, you know, it's, it's more around the mindset um, that comes with it. So back to our POC. And uh, I remind you that we are all around uh, finding those, uh, those actors. Um, so, as someone here also said, uh, we are going to have two models pipeline, okay? And we are going to like real, real life POC right here, uh, but we are only going to focus on the first uh, on the first model of uh, face detection. So, given a scene or given one image, we are going to do the uh, the faces uh, detection. And uh, I found a really cool GitHub library. Uh, for uh, uh, Python engineers that also has like, uh, it has wrapped a lot of uh, machine learning and uh, especially in, around images and voice uh, um, processing. And uh, I'll show you like in a three lines of code uh, what, what I did just there. Uh, one second then. Like this is like, this is the GitHub re repository. Um, and this is like the face detection, and we'll, we'll run it uh, here live. Uh, I only did a few changes. Uh, I added this, uh, um, this notebook, and I just wrapped uh, some function and exposed a few parameters so it would be very easy and not uh, too hard to understand. So um, uh, this, this is like the default image that came, and actually, it, it looks cool. It recognizes that this is an ABBA, <laughs> ABBA picture. And uh, you can see that it uh, perfectly recognizes, but uh, this is uh, not a good example because this one came with the package itself. <laughs> so let's start, uh, let's <laughs> look at another example. Um, so this is the next example. And uh, yeah, it looks, it looks really, really good, right? Um, let's go to the next one. All right, <laughs> well, this, this didn't go that well. And I found that uh, there is a parameter here that we can tweak and uh, maybe it will help. Yeah, indeed it, it helped, okay? So, uh, so there is some parameter fine tuning, but now if we, if we fine tune this parameter and we're not going to dive deep into, into why this scale factor has uh, helped me, 
but um, but then we have to do like regression test, like make sure that uh, this parameter uh, works well on all the other photos as well. So uh, and we are not going to do it. Uh, but this is just for you to feel how how it looks. So. Uh, the first tip, and this is like not an actual tip here from the presentation, so, so it's tip, tip number zero. Start with something that already exists, a uh, package, don't, don't like invent the wheel for a POC. Start with a package that is already th there, and I do hope that um, this is not news to anyone. <laughs> so now, uh, let's say, okay, for, let's assume that we have ran it, uh, over a few movie scenes, and now I need yeah, this back. And we tested it, and we understand that uh, it needs some calibration, and it needs some parameter fine-tuning. And uh, we also uh, we learned something from the data. So we learned about the types of mistakes of uh, boxing uh, faces, uh, because we learned on a mistake that uh, there is no face and we box it, or there, there is a face and we don't uh, uh, put a box around it. So, yeah, okay, good. And, uh, and now we are coming to the phase where we, are, we want to make it perfect. We want to make, like, fine-tune it and, uh, and really um, fit it to our data. Or shall I say, overfit it to our data. Um, and my tip is don't do that, <laughs> all right? So don't make it perfect, because then you'll dive into finding like the best solution and finding like the best set of parameters for a set that is not like it's it's just a test set, you know? It's it's not real life set. There is a saying that perfect is an enemy of good enough. Right. <laughs> Uh, so I know that you want to make it perfect, and I know that like this is like it hurts. It hurts. You you see something, and you know what you have to do. But I'm saying, okay, stop yourself. Stop uh, uh, tweaking the model, and uh, understand that this is bad. This is bad for you, and this is bad for the team. Because uh, if you're like diving into long POCs and trying to optimize everything, then uh, you lose trust. It's hard to explain what you're doing. You say, yeah, I optimize this parameter and then this, but this is like just a POC. And uh, what you want is to get it into the customer hands, even if it's like a POC, an offline POC, get it into the customer hands as quick as possible in order to know maybe, maybe this solution is good enough. Maybe customers will say, well, this, this gives me like, okay, only three faces out of four, but this gives me already a lot of value and I'm willing to pay for it and that's all good. Yeah, it could be. And um, it, could be, it could be that customers will say, I don't even care about the results of, of it, uh, but the UI is so annoying. Like th there is something else that could bother them and we don't know. Like, don't even know. And, and uh, it could be that they say, even it, if it was perfect, then uh, I don't want it. It's not, it's not something I'm willing to pay for. It doesn't give me any, any value, even if, it's, if the machine learning model is like 100% perfect. Yeah. But maybe this applies to products that their core value is not the machine learning or the algorithmic side, right? Mm -hmm. I think that like, in for machine learning products, understanding whether you can make it or not may take some more time. You know, like any deep tech company I, I know started with a lot of process, tiresome process, still the funds I'm always, you know, mm -hmm. this is one. Second, uh, I mean, I, like, there is like the good enough, mm -hmm. right? But, but then it doesn't really has to be some connection with the machine learning at some point, right? Right, right. So uh, what, uh, what, uh, what I'm saying here is that um, this is something, of course, that every project and every company has like its own flavor of things, right? Uh, but what I mean here is that you have to um, have in mind like the option 
that maybe you are diving into something that is eventually not 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 good enough not because of the tech not of because of, because of the machine learning and uh, you should try as soon as possible to release it uh, to not release in, in production uh, in, in production meaning but uh, to release it to the customer hands and uh, and to the management and uh, make sure that you're on the right direction then after you you get the okay you're good then go and, and uh, hit the development phase. All right. Uh, so some do's and don't do's here. Uh, don't go and optimize the parameters over like this POC data set. Uh, don't answer like new research questions that pop out all the time during the POC. Uh, don't test like five, six, ten different solutions uh, and uh, choose the best one. Uh, instead, like state the parameters, like note to yourself what you, you can do in, in the development phase. Uh, list the new research questions and prioritize them. Ask the product, will, will it be interesting to, to do this and to go that direction? That's okay. Just list them and don't like go and uh, solve them. Um, and choose one simple solution, or maybe two, like if it's really not doing it, but, but uh, uh, you know, limit yourself on the number of the solutions that you are trying during the POC phase, not in the development. In the development, you have to make it as perfect as possible. That's a different story. But like in the POC phase, limit yourself. Um, tip number two, know your audience. Who's the audience? Who, who is the audience for POC? Who gets the results? Who? Product the product manager, right. Who else? Management. The management. The customers. The customers. Oh, you've listed all three. <laughs> um, yeah, so um, these are usually not data scientists. <laughs> so uh, know your audience. When uh, you're seeing it, so you can say, okay, this is the precision, this is the recall, this is the F1 score. They don't care. They don't give, like, they don't care. <laughs> um, so don't show a Python notebook. No, 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 no. It's only saved for these kind of events. It's not for like the customers or the management. Even if it looks like very organized, no, don't do that. Um, don't talk about F1 score or AUC score. It's not something that uh, people can actually perceive usually, like most of the times. Don't uh, dive into like implementation nitty gritty details of everything that you have done. Um, and don't portray a perfect image of like, this is what you're going to, to see and this solves everything 100%. It looks like amazing. Don't portray it. Instead, prepare a deck or maybe a demo if you have the resources and um, explain the business value, not the AUC, but like what's, what's the actual business value behind it. And um, this is something I struggle a lot with because I can talk about the, the, the underlying technology in machine learning for hours, but I have to like find a compelling sentence to describe this technology. Um, so do like try to find it. And um, do describe the limitations and all the things that you have seen in, during the, the POC phase that could be a problem. It's, it's a risk that everyone should like notice. And, and this is time for education. Like machine learning is, is not going to give you perfect results. And this is a, a good time to say, listen, this, this is the case. This is what we can do. Um, yes. Let's not dive into it because I don't have a, lo a long time, but uh, maybe at the end, if we have time for questions. Um, so this leads me to the last point, and uh, I will shorten a bit. 
And uh, the thing is to really communicate the gap to production. So this is how we started it. A lot of people said like the, the problem with POCs is that it's not production ready. And this is the time that you can communicate it after you finish and you present your results. Um, so even if it looks perfect and it looks, it looks so promising and everybody loves it and we present it to the management, I've been in this situation before that they ask me, okay, uh, ready for deployment? Is it ready for tomorrow? And I'm like, uh, no. <laughs> And, and they asked me, why this looks so great? Uh, so the one thing I can prepare is like a real life example. Like if, if you have a real world data, then um, you can have like this kind of, uh, of movie, okay, in Amazon Prime. And it can be a very embarrassing result, right? <laughs> so you don't want that. And um, another possibility, is that you have this kind of movie, and this is another very, like this is not the result that they would expect. And this is like real world data, it's messy. It looks like a lot of things that you don't expect. And uh, you should explain it to the customers, to the management, to the product management. This is something you, you need to, um, to, to explain very clearly. And uh, scaling is about the data that we just saw. And it's uh, also about uh, the infrastructure, because if we want models that keep learning from their mistakes and we have like something that like online uh, training, then it requires a lot of infrastructure. And um, it's not only one model, it's usually like a pipeline, a few models that are uh, con concatenated, maybe simultaneously, maybe asynchronously. So, the, there's a lot of aspects and you should like explain it uh, all, uh, all the time in order to like be able to get this buy-in and support around you. Um, so basically, we are here at the end of uh, this talk. Uh, so let's uh, summarize by saying tip number one, don't make it perfect, even though it's hard. Um, and then know your audience don't like talk business, talk business. It's the best, uh, it's the best way and communicate, communicate the gap to production uh, because it's really something that requires a lot of in infrastructure and people like a lot of times don't understand it. And uh, that's it, ready for questions. Yeah, I'll repeat the question. So the question was how to know exactly how how much resources we need for like to complete the project. Um, this is really tough and it comes uh, a lot with experience. And uh, what you need to do is like, first of all, to try to break it and do your best to break it uh, down into uh, building blocks. But uh, eventually um, what I do is I give a t-shirt size. So I'm not saying it will take three days and a half. It's never three days, three years and a half. Um, but uh, I'm saying something like a small, medium, large, extra large, where uh, like small in machine learning is, uh, is a month and I never hit small. So it's always like medium three months, uh, uh, I don't know, three to six months, one year and more. And then I never take the extra large, so I'm focusing on the medium and large. Like I have a whole thing about it, <laughs> but it's it's really hard. Yeah. Yeah. So so what you're saying is that uh, there is the accuracy. It's still science, but you cannot. Uh... Yeah, but the accuracy it it has like a value in it, right? So it means um, uh, that people in 10% of the times will not get like the, the right actor, or they are not going to get any actor at all. So this is something that you can say, but if you're saying this is uh, like a 90% precision, then it doesn't say anything. But if you say like 10% of the time, people will not see the, the expected results, then they can understand it. And you can say with this model, I think that we can get 
drop it to to five percent. Yeah, but for like a, a regression model, here is a classification model, so it's easy to go. I don't know. Like it's every case that you have to find the business justification, and it's not easy always to, to for data scientists to connect it. But this is like this is our job. This I I think that our job is also like because it's such a new field, we have like it's on us. It's on us to explain the business value and to talk the business language because no one else can like do this connection. It's easier for us to do this connection than to the business people. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, so thank you, everyone.